Welcome to HeartTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna give you a tour about 40 feet long in one of the most beautiful gardens I've ever seen. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden These are the two lower waterfalls on this water feature. We're going to work our way up um, through a stream uh, up toward the top. This garden um, one thing you need to know about it, it is a shade garden, but it's high shade. Uh, and if we can raise the camera up here, uh, there's a dogwood up above uh, the back of this uh, stone wall. There's some bamboo over to the, to the right of that. Uh, and most of all the trees in this landscape have been limbed up very high. And so although it is shady, uh, it is good bright light in here. Uh, so you know, keep, keep that in mind. I'm early in the morning shooting here. Um, and it's just, uh, this water, this, this, this entire garden to just bl absolutely blow your mind. I've got a couple other videos uh, from this space and I'll link those down below um, the video if you wanna check those out for a more grand tour of the space. First of all, this moss, <laughs> which she did not put this moss uh, on the uh, waterfalls. Uh, this is just formed over time and it makes it seem like these waterfalls have been here forever and ever. The noise is amazing, the way the water scatters across so many, so many of these rocks. The backdrop back here is made up. There's a Japanese maple up there. Uh, I see a, a big leaf hydrangea. Uh, it's almost maybe almost too dark to get a lot of flowers on a big leaf hydrangea. They're sh part shade plants. That may be a little too dark. There's an abelia up here. And I think every abelia tag you ever see is gonna say full sun, full sun, full sun, but uh, they thrive. Uh, in shady spaces, probably won't bloom quite as well. Uh, the gold plant um, up on the uh, back uh, is a, a euonymus, uh, a creeping euonymus. There's several of those uh, throughout this uh, landscape and it's just a gold pop of color. The horsetail makes quite a statement coming up almost out of the water. Uh, really a uh, you know, very, very nice vertical feature uh, at the back in front of these walls. So there's a boxwood here, uh, and you can kind of tell from you know how it stretched a bit, you know that's in a little bit uh, too much more shade than it would like, but it looks great and uh, has all that new growth on it right now. Uh, down below it, there's literally ground covers everywhere, and I mean in a small space here, you know we can see dwarf mondo grass in between the stone walkway. We can see some uh, sweet variegated sweet flag. Uh, there are. Um, uh, the creeping raspberry here, um, which you know I love, it can kind of get it can it creeps, so you know you have to cut it back occasionally. But it's a great ground cover. Again, it has that new growth coming on it that you know where it has that two tone color in the spring and the summer. There's some uh, strawberry begonias creeping over the rock behind it. The foliage is very similar between those two ground covers, but one is variegated, uh, one is not, and the uh, strawberry begonia is in full bloom, as you can see. Uh, right there, and it's uh, along the along a lot of the trails uh, throughout this uh, throughout this landscape. There's a, a plum you um, up on top of the uh, fount, up just above the uh, fountain um, that uh, I didn't point out earlier. Uh, that almost every shade garden I ever do, um, I, you know, there's always that. It's just such a great plant, and you see that new growth on it. it has that kind of bright bright green. Uh, against that older foliage, which is really, really super dark green. That uh, um, strawberry begonia is also in the rocks between the two fountains back there above all that uh, moss. Uh, it's quite striking from a distance. It looks, uh, it just looks great back there. There are various ferns throughout this space and uh, uh, I won't attempt to name them all, but there are uh, uh, they're ferns so you, you, as you would expect in a, you know, an acre uh, or more uh, shade garden. There's lots and lots of ferns used. Uh, coming down below that, uh, 
there's a blue star juniper and most junipers are also going to be full sun plants but you know it's a little thinner than it would be but that blue foliage still shows up great here in the shade garden various stones uh, used throughout this landscape um, <laughs> for whatever reason here i'm putting several videos in a row together where there's lots and lots of stonework in them and you can really see how stone is used to show off uh, all of these plants what a spot this is uh, in the garden really is truly an amazing space uh, there's a golden hinoki cypress uh, in this space and this is a plant that you know it's between a, a walkway and a couple stones here this is a plant that would actually get quite big over a long period of time uh, but it just looks fantastic here it could stay here 10 years and it wouldn't it won't matter it won't matter at all um, and, and then if it needs to be replaced it can be replaced another uh, blue star juniper and uh, as we go up you'll notice um, I'm going to do a couple of these tours around these fountains because there's let me see, one, two, three, five fountains uh, in this landscape. Uh, so the, another one you'll see will also have a lot of this sweet variegated sweet flag uh, down right in the edge of the water. And again, various ferns uh, along, the, uh, along the sides, um, as you would expect in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, along the edge of a stream bed. Uh, this is a black bamboo up here above us. It's probably been there for a while. Uh, it is contained in a concrete structure. So you wonder how this bamboo is not taking over this landscape. Uh, here's one spot um, where they have it contained. And uh, at the end of this video, we'll see another spot with a beautiful gold uh, bamboo also contained in a concrete, in a, in a, literally in its own concrete container. Uh, it's just, just absolutely wild. This is uh, um, Procumbens nana juniper again another plant that i think if you saw the tag would say full sun and here it is in a park shade condition and it's slightly looser uh, because of that but again it's bright light in here because we have high you know ha have high shade but uh, it's not really getting very much direct sun but look it looks great uh, let's see what else there's actually liriope uh, growing back in here right, right above um, it's a great use of that liriope right up against the rock on the uh, on the back of that Every stone is just placed perfectly in here. It's just an amazing, all the, all the uh, moss that's grown on it uh, since it's been here. There's a, by the time you see this video, you will have seen a video with Ram and uh, her husband. Uh, and uh, we'll know, how, you, you'll, if, if you go back and watch that video, um, you'll have some idea of how long this, uh, this feature has been in place. Again, now you're seeing a stream uh, coming down to that lower pond. Uh, so you had two waterfalls down at the base of it, stream running down, and we'll see the other waterfall here in just a second. A little further up here, uh, there's, a, there's a beautiful pergola seating area that we'll take a look at. But again, up in here, there's another uh, a Japanese maple that's uh, limbed way up uh, in the background. Again, creating dappled light through here uh, all day long. She's got lots and lots of containers throughout this landscape. Uh, this is a cryptomeria. Another plant that's in a little too much shade, but look what the lack of light has done to it. It's turned it into this super interesting uh, piece uh, in the garden. There's another one in a container on the other side. There's some oxalis uh, blooming. It's getting enough light in here to, uh, to flower. And you can see where the camera's angled in right there. You know, there's, you know, you've got the dwarf mondo again, the acaris, the Japanese painted fern back there. Just uh, amazing everywhere you look. Uh, there's something going on in this garden if uh we'll come on up into this uh, pergola area again with lots and lots of containers uh, throughout this uh, landscape there's a lot of ground cover euonymus i showed you one on the back of the uh the pond at the beginning of the video uh, there's another one with an oxalis growing out of the middle of it weeping japanese maple uh, it just looks fantastic and tucked up up in there we hear you know there's like a three-tier waterfall up in that area and we have some repeats we have a different uh, variegated acaris up in there um, or sweet flag there's some uh, percumbens nana juniper we've got the uh, water lilies uh, in front of us here that are just uh, 
Um, haven't really gotten started for the season yet, but as soon as the water warms up, um, they'll take off pretty quickly. So this patio alone is one of the most incredible designs that you'll see. This, is, this rock was put into place to make it appear as if it was part of this, of this patio all along. And then where this waterfall, where this pool for the waterfall ends was sculpted uh, into it. Uh, and so where a lot of folks would go out and say, how do I want to, I want to build a patio. I want it 12 by 15. It's going to be a perfect rectangle. And then that's what they would do. This was thought through to make it seem like it was natural occurring things <laughs> were, were, were happening here um, and, and were cut out of the uh, rectangle. The view coming back on the pergola the other direction, we have a wisteria uh, on the top of it and another uh, Japanese maple up above it. Uh, again, it's been limbed. It's been limbed way up to allow some light uh, underneath this uh, canopy. Uh, another one of these cryptomeria uh, in a container. There's some uh, blatilla uh, planted in several locations in this garden, and actually um, one of the one of the uh, I'm going I'm to sneak through here real quick because there's another there's another little uh, lower pond and three other additional waterfalls for this the upper part of this uh, right here but the reason I actually snuck around here is one of the geniuses of this this garden is here's more of that uh, blatilla on this side and then if Steph will um, continue to uh, swing around uh, it's also used it's also used right here and so um, you know it's in three different locations right here on this path and so uh, it just really, you know, they're, they're, they're placed perfectly. There's, there's, they use three different groupings of them, but they're placed uh, far apart, but you can see them all. Uh, here's another uh, juniper. And again, uh, again, that'll be the theme here is it's a little bit thinner than it probably would be in the full sun. But what's that allowed her to do? It allowed her to limit up and actually plant uh, ground covers underneath it uh, and place rocks underneath it, um, have, the, uh, have the orchids spread underneath it it's just kind of uh, amazing and i think we'll finish with this gold bamboo up here above this um, and steph can just kind of back out as she uh, as she goes um, and you can see more and more of it uh, but that's absolutely beautiful and i think you could see when she had the camera under here it's surrounded by concrete and so it can't get out. Apparently at one time it was running wild in the, in the garden, but now it is completely contained and it's, it's beautiful and it's almost the centerpiece of this incredible garden space. Uh, so there you go, there's, <laughs> I don't know, what was that, 40 feet of walking or something? We saw uh, two three-tiered fountains, the two, fount you know, two fountains on and a river in between, uh, a pergola, two types of bamboo and oh holy moly. <laughs> I could do this in 20 other spots in this garden. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. Thanks for watching, guys.